imagine that there's going to be a lot of additional furniture moving in. There's going to be a lot of things like that. So I imagine that's where a lot of that is coming from. Um, and I wanted to get an update on that because it is, um, well, it's a month and some into the semester and those things have not been in the office yet. Um, and so I think if we are allocating our budget towards the majority of the office budget towards that, and it's already been used, I would like to see it in the office or at least get an update about where that is, where that is at in the process of coming physically into the office. You're asking me specifically. Um, yes, that is a process that we've started in May and it does not, it's not a go to Ikea, build up and move in. Yeah. It is a PO system that takes four months for orders to get approved. We just got all the purchase orders approved. So now we are waiting. Now it's the final loop of communication of scheduling things and moving things around. Because the first thing we have to do is get a heck to remove the furniture. They're going to paint, they're going to potentially vacuum and carpet clean, and then the move-in of the new furniture will come in and then it'll be set up. So right now we are all, as advisors and professionals, trying to circle circle the chain, trying to figure out when's best for everyone. So we're shooting and hoping before Thanksgiving, but this is these are things that, you know, it's a, it's a process. They're still removing furniture even now. And then, thank you for that update. That's helpful to know. Um, and then when, in terms of, you know, moving through the process, is there anything as counselors that we can do to support that process? No? Okay. Um, and then an additional question within that is who approved the, not that I'm not saying that I disagree with it. I'm just, it's more out of like an understanding question. The, those funds for the office budget to be used and allocated in that way. Oh, that I have no idea. I was not in the budget draw up meeting, so I don't know where I was initially planning. In budgeting sense, I was thinking of the money coming out of a different pot. Um, so I need to I will get with Stephen to figure out how that was determined. But if anyone was in that meeting, Victor, if you want to speak to that. It was from my understanding during the meeting that Stefan and Mike and I, I think Cynthia were already planning on buying stuff. So they were already planning them themselves um, as if we were told or asked if it was OK. I that wasn't that wasn't in the meeting as of my understanding. But I, th yeah, I think it was like a general assumption that we all wanted. It. OK, thank you. Well. Um, hey, uh, Victor, question for you. Uh, who was in that meeting? It was Stefan, Mike. It was Siobhan, uh, Haley, me, and then you were online, if I remember correctly. Oh, it was that meeting? It was that, the 8 a.m. That was determined. 21,000? It was... <laughs> Sixteen thousand. Um, I guess when Mike is here, he'll give a better account. So I'll hold my questions for him. Any more questions on uh, accepting this budget? Mm. Without our budget chair here. Yes. Tell me more about that why you don't want to wait for the budget chair to be here to approve a budget. Because he, all them drafted up and everything for us, and it's now for us to accept it. It's not like he missed anything. He was there in the meeting when he determined everything. At the beginning, you know, they basically picked her to come represent yeah. for reading it and moving forward. Thank you. And we're almost a month into school, and if we wait anymore, mm -hmm. we're not going to be able to do much. And we have an event planned on Wednesday, and we need to approve this budget before we could allocate any mon money or funds to be able to actually fund that. Mm 
So do you have any more questions? Can you, because I wasn't in that meeting, can you tell me more about the allocation for public relations committee at $28,000? Yes. Or sorry, I'm not the chair. Levi. <laughs> Um, so for public relations, are you asking why it's that high? Yeah, I'm just curious as to what that conversation looked like when you were deciding that so number. That's a high I number. wasn't in the meeting, but I can describe it from last year um, because we okay. have many events like our food for finals is probably about 10K okay. between the two semesters. Um, we usually try and budget for like spring fling and fall fest, any tabling stuff. Um, we have a resolution that me and Will are putting out today for school supplies that comes out of the PR budget. Um, so they will probably use most of that, if not all of it. Okay, and then is there somebody in the, who is in this meeting that can tell me for this year what that looks like? Siobhan? I, I wasn't going to talk about the PR. I was, I was um I wanted to give you the breakdown of how the twenty one thousand dollars came about. The twenty one twenty that's okay. Oh okay. I'm really curious about the twenty eight. All right. Um, with the um, PR in, within the PR committee, since we're in charge of holding the event, and we 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 were in charge of paying for the spot and everything, and paying for food and everything. So that's why PR is so high. And some of the money too, um, like when it comes down to um, school supplies and stuff, some of that mm -hmm. has has to come out of the PR budget. So, yeah, we're dealing with the bigger, the heavier lifting. That's why. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It was an objection to the budget. It was more tell me more about that because mm -hmm. I wasn't in that meeting and because we don't have our chair here. Yeah, it's just questions. It's fine. Uh, it's all good. I would hope so. Okay, perfect. All right. To reiterate again, well, uh, I'm going to keep the meeting going. Um, I motion that we vote for the I agenda. <laughs> oh, we didn't approve the agenda yet. We did. Yeah, we did. Oh, yeah, okay. we did. Come on. Yeah, so to reiterate, uh, I motion that we approve the uh, budget. I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion is passed. Now, uh, moving on to the next part is a uh, student supply run re run resolution, uh, which is going to be presented by Will and Matt. Or, sorry. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. it, you guys will present, right? Yes. Do you mind pulling that up in the main chat? This is the document of the next session. The document. Uh, you can pull it up after we read it. God damn it. Uh, when you guys can join the meeting and uh, share it. Well, just to keep things flowing, are we okay if I motion to put that behind the SGA conference discussion so we're not losing time yeah. while we pull it up? Yeah. I, well, I motion that we I move that. item three under item four on the agenda. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passed. Move on to the next uh, piece in the agenda. So discussion on the SGA conference um, for fall or spring. So basically the conference is for uh, student government um, all over the uh, nation to come to uh, Washington DC, uh, if I remember correctly, to come to this conference. Um, and we have to decide on, a, we basically need to plan now, are we gonna send people during uh, the fall semester or the spring semester? And uh, if we're doing it, we need to do it right now. So uh, if we do do in the fall, it'll be trickier to plan because we have a short amount of time before we send people. Um, we need to get the ball rolling, find out who's interested, determine uh, how many we want to go, and if and if who's going, what additional uh, fundraising is needed. And then uh, for the spring semester, um, it doesn't really make sense to send counselors who uh, uh, to the spring conference if they're not returning. 
So we're having a thing where we're only going to send individuals who plan on running for the council again from 2025 to 2026. And um, yeah, what are you guys' thoughts or feelings for either the fall or spring semester? Well, um, just to give more context, there's two events for that conference in the fall semester. There's one that is at DC, which is coming up pretty soon, within like a month, I believe, or a little over a month. And then uh, you have the one in Orlando, which is in November. So um, with that being said, I think I don't see it feasible to get it all organized for the one I believe in October or the one happening before the Orlando one that's like a month away maybe and I just don't think that would be in our best benefit if we were to decide fall semester versus spring to go to the one that's about a month or less away just because we would need to hurry we have other things that are more pressing to do to get set up and get going you know as a council so that's that's where my um, opinions at with this conference. Yeah, it's just it's too too late on the draw. In my opinion, yes, the first one. Anyone else? I think that there should be a focus on the people who passing resolutions, people meeting with students, people working on things in their committees here um, before we try and go to a conference. Um, and I also agree with you that I think it would be better suited for folks to go in the spring, um, especially those who plan on being returning council members. Um, but I think we should be focusing our efforts here for right now, especially considering the quick timeline of the October conference. Anyone else? I'd just like to know the sentiments other than Amelia's because this be more like we could all go or some of us go in the spring. I just like would want whoever's present their opinions and thoughts. And this is a yeah. chance to represent our campus on the national level. Right. Victor. I just feel like we should have some sort of representation, mm -hmm. but obviously plan it. So I would say in the spring have a group of students be able to go uh, to represent and whoever that's fit, then we could vote on it. But I would say, yeah, let's take our time with that as well. Anybody else? Did folks go last year? Uh, no, I brought it up last year, but we weren't able to go because again, it was presented or I found out about it right when we started. And the first event was exactly when we started. Mm -hmm. So I only found out last minute and so we weren't we had a lot of other stuff going on too during the time so no one was unfortunately able to go last year i'm just curious to see that yeah i'm on speak yeah okay um and this is just my advice as the advisor take it how you want it um so the asga conference um, I don't know much about it. I have expressed to you before, um, the word on the street is that it's not the best, but I understand, you know, a student government leadership development opportunity like this is something that I do believe some of the folks should go through, um, just to get that exposure to what other student governments are doing and to understand what's really going on in the market. Now, now, sorry. Now, while we did not send anyone last year to any conferences, the two years prior to that, we did send some folks um, to what is the NACA, National Association of Campus Activities, Student Government Institute. Um, while I thought it was decent of, you know, a conversation builder and just training and a leadership opportunity to expand your understanding of student government and how to do things, a lot of the attendees did not feel that it represented our student government best. Yeah. Um, they did feel that it was very, some folks felt that it was very um, white led in a way. Um, and other folks just did not understand why we went as it did not represent our type of student government. Now, my final statement I will say is we have to remember we are one of two three institutions of the nation that have this solid structure. So realistically, there's nothing gonna be for us. So you need to understand that you have to adapt those learnings into our learnings and see how you can adapt and frame them to work for us. 
if you are going to go to a conference that is going to talk and speak on typical student government structures, just so you all understand that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so there's any discussion going uh, for fall or spring? Would most people go for spring? Um, sorry. What? Just to bring up our future. Well, okay. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, then in that case, yeah, I, I we have quorum. We make. Uh, I mean, we can vote on this. Yeah. So uh, I motion that we vote on settling on a semester at the minimum. Yes. Uh, second that. So all in favor? Aye. All right. Motion passed. Oh, sorry. Well, Spring or fall. Well, so I'm motioning. Oh, okay, sorry. I'll let you. All right. Uh, I would say uh, I was going to motion to vote on a spring or fall semester. So, motion to uh, vote on spring or fall. So, just say spring or fall. You prefer? A motion for spring. A motion the roll call vote where it's one by one and then we figure it out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Lead it. Uh, I vote we go for spring. I'll go spring. Siobhan? Spring. Amelia? Spring. With the caveat that I think we might need to reconsider what spaces we are in and investing our time in when we are going to conferences. So yes, spring for conference, but is this the right conference? Maybe that's a conversation for later. We'll figure it out. And I, and I go for spring. I go for spring. Go for spring. Sounds like motion is passed. Then we'll go for the spring semester. This conference. Um, since that's resolved, we move on to the next item. Um, do we want to, Armando, do you want to go with Patrick or do you guys have it set up? Okay. Do you guys have it set up? We'll do that. Or, no. no, I'm just talking to us. Do we have it? Well, do we want to swear in so you can vote on stuff? Uh, no, we'll, we'll swear in at the end of the day. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So you, you go through all your updates and then we'll swear in. All right. You're running through. Okay. Uh, so yeah, for the student supply run resolution, do you guys have the presentation ready? Yeah, I put them in the chat. In the chat, I yeah. give us one moment, please, Chair. Because I also did the other one I put in to make sure it was good. Yeah. The other one too. The last one, I guess. The last one. Yeah. Okay. We'll do. Uh -huh. All right, Matt. I really want your opinion when we get to this one. Hey, so this is our resolution to purchase school supplies. Um, so the abstract, if I can read it again. Oh, I guess I can pull it up my computer, make it easier. Yeah. So our abstract is to approve a funding amount of $2,250 to purchase a broad range of school supplies for the school year. Um, these school supplies will be given out throughout the year to MSU Denver students and can be used for tabling events that the Student Advocacy Council plans to host. Um, whereas the Metropolitan State University Student Government, the Student Advocacy Council's mission is to support evolving needs of the MSU Denver students by advocating in their best interest to enhance the university experience and opportunities. Uh, whereas we represent a large population of students who are considered low income, and we want to support these students with some of the basic school play costs that are barriers to education. Whereas the school supplies would be stored in the TSAC office for students to stop by and grab free school supplies. And the public relations team can utilize the supplies at tabling and outreach activities. Uh, whereas TSAC will reassess the stock of school supplies on hand for the spring 2025 semester in December 2024. 
and make another resolution if needed to order more school supplies. Therefore, be it further resolved, um, I request that a set allocate amount of $2,250 from the public relations budget be appropriated to support this resolution and further support the accessibility of school supplies for our student body during the fall semester. Is there any questions? Amelia? Do you have any dates um, in mind or events in mind that you will be tabling at? That would be a little more for the PR committee as a whole, but it would be part of why we're trying to pass it right now. We already have a list of school supplies that um, if this gets passed, we're going to try and potentially order today um, in time for the event on Wednesday. OK. Well, uh, just a response to your question as well. Food for finals. We also have a handout school supplies, mm -hmm. you know, in case they need it for their finals, like the book, green booklet and stuff like that. And uh, yeah. So whatever events we have, we table, we usually bring school supplies to give out. Any other questions? No. Thank you. I have a question. So, how so would this predominantly be for the low income supply students, like for the low income students, or is it just for the for those um, meetings, those events? Um, so, we both keep a uh, supply outside for students to walk in and grab what they need. It's happened before. I've been there, um, and we also hand them out at events that we table or we do uh, as TSAC. So both, a little bit of both. But we don't ask about their financial status whatsoever. It's just if they need school supplies, they come grab them and that's it. Would that be in our office? or? Yeah, we have a dedicated shelving unit um, that currently has some school supplies. We're just trying to restock from what we had from last year. Any more questions? Online? Tivoli 307. Any more questions online? No? All right. Uh, I will motion to uh, vote on this. Vote on this resolution. Oh, I'll turn that off. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Hi. Oh, beloved trustee. Oh. Oh, so we just finished voting on the uh, school supply resolution. Oh, the budget pass. Yep. Yes. Oh, lovely. Okay. Uh, so, next thing on the agenda, did you want to do the oh. budget for open house next? Yep, that's what I pulled up right there. Yep, so the next uh, thing we have for the visit is the budget for uh, and it's going to be Matt for the. Okay. Um, so for this one, we're wanting to do the open house next week. Um, so this is just for us to vote on to make it official. Um, so the abstract is for the public relations committee wants to host a TSAC open house on September 25th and are looking to be able to buy food, decorations, and swag items. Whereas the Metropolitan State University Student Government, the Student Advocacy Council needs to become more open and accessible to the, to the student body. For as many students do not know what TSAC does or how to connect with TSAC, so TSAC needs to be more visible to the MSU Denver student body. Whereas the main purpose of the TSAC open house event is to attract students to come and meet their counselors 
learn about what we do, how we can help, and how to join slash support TSAC. Whereas the public relations committee will acquire food and decorations for the event. Whereas the public relations committee will also acquire swag items that will attract more students to join the open house and participate with TSAC. Therefore, be it resolved, um, I request that the public relations committee can utilize their budget for all aspects of running this event so we can attract more of the MSU Denver student body to meet with TSAC and build a connect. Build the. I might need to edit a couple of these words. Build the connect between TSAC and the MSU Denver community. Any questions? Okay. Actually, I have one. I wanted to, because I did this more to make sure it was on here, I also want to check in with our PR committee to make sure I'm not overstepping anything and giving them the opportunity to bring any concerns. I am thankful that you even came up with that. And is that the same thing so that we could get the, the swags for the um raffle? Yes. Oh, yes. I put the, yeah. I, I, that's the last whereas. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll be acquiring swag items. We'll attract more students. Okay, yes. Because we didn't remember, we didn't have anything to offer the students other than food. S Susanna, <laughs> we didn't have anything other than just those little squishy balls or what you call stress balls <laughs> to offer the students when they come to the event other than food. So Matt had came to me and asked me about that and I approve of it, but yeah, he, he wanted you to know about it too and see what you think, Susanna. I tried to word this to where it hit the points we talked about to make it to where you all can do what you need to do, but vague enough to where it wasn't trying to tell you what to do. Hmm? We also have like old swag in the storage, so I wouldn't worry about next Wednesday, but like for like next future events, like we have it ready, so I approve this. What swag do you want to buy? Well, I'm curious. The reason that I asked that question is because I don't want it to just sit in our office and go unused. I want students to utilize it. So I wanted to see if there had been any conversation about engaging students through those items. And if that's a conversation for after this meeting, that's OK. But I think it's something important to ask. I have a second that motion. Okay. Uh, I won two. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, I see. I see. Perfect. Well, um, I wanted to open up because I know there's some questions on the budget committee. I know there's just some questions on board trustees. I just came from that as well. Been there since very early in the morning. So if there's any questions of the council I can answer at this time, ask away. I'd say we keep the board of trustee updates to when we go to board and committee announcements. Um, as far oh, as yeah. the budget, I, I think that should be discussed. Yeah. Also, Michael Warner presence. Um, so, yeah, okay. Last item on uh, for new business is swearing in our new staff counselor, uh, Patrick uh, Spira. And I'll thank you for coming, Patrick. We're happy to have you. Um, if you could uh, just do a quick intro for us uh, today, major, year, et cetera. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, my name is Patrick Cervera. 
Uh, my major is business management as right now. My year currently is a junior. Um, you know, I look forward to uh, you know, going getting inside here and, and what to do. Uh, now for the next part. Um, okay, now please repeat after me. I state your name. I'm Patrick Sidabetta. You solemnly affirm that I will faithfully execute the position or the duties of my position within TSEC or SG TSEC. I'll give you a good setting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you solemnly affirm? Do solemnly affirm that I will faithfully execute that I will faithfully execute the duties of my position. The duties of my position within SG TSEC. Within SG TSEC. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. And uphold the values. And uphold the values. Of integrity, of integrity, inclusivity, inclusivity, and advocacy, and advocacy. Congratulations! You're now officially sworn in uh, as a member of the Student Advocacy Council. Is a long road, and uh, work follows up. So we'll be sure that uh, you'll bring amazing perspective and leadership. And uh, thank you for joining us. Do you apologize for that rough reading? Right. Um, so next is the board of committee uh, announcements and updates. We'll move to uh, first one on the docket. Uh, board of trustees, Mike. Hello, everybody. Well, I just got out of two very long days of board of trustees committee meetings and then the actual meeting itself. Um, a lot of stuff, a lot of things. Um, first thing note, enrollment's up 2% among master's students and undergraduates. This is good. Um, through um, One thing the university was facing was an enrollment cliff. Enrollment was going down throughout COVID. COVID did a really number to the university. We have through the work of the advancement team, through the work of Dr. Davidson, successfully turned that cliff around and we're on the uprise now. So that's something we're really excited about. Um, I think the enrollment team, Long, uh, he's the director of it, has done an amazing job, and I think we're gonna see the benefit of that twofold. So that's one big thing. Um, finance and audits, um, we had two meetings, finance and audit, and then academic, um, the, it's like an academic policy kind of committee. Um, we, one thing I want to uh, kind of put out is at the end of 2027, that's when then these projects are going to be, there's going to be a lot more projects on the campus being completed, whether that is student housing that is set to be done by 2027 as well. Um, the PE center will be, uh, the school is kind of buying the PE center from AHEC in a sense. So that will be its own MSU Denver specific event center that we will not have to pay for. Unlike it's like, like the turn hall, but like our own. So that's very exciting as well. Um, updates um our hotel is the fourth best in denver so the hotel that the the university owns fourth best in denver it's a great income source for us great way for the hospitality students to get lots of good experience out of that so that's really good um and then the c2 hub as well that will be uh c2 hub and the health institute tower two other big projects coming at the end of 2027 so we'll all probably be long gone by then but uh it is really cool to know that like i'll come back here in like 10 years and there'll be 20 new buildings on campus so exciting um that's that um, anything academic affairs. Um, there's a lot, um, but one update I really did get, I, I thought that would be worth knowing to this uh, committee was from Dr. Benitez, who's the vice president of, vice president of inclusion and um, diversity here. Um, they did a big, uh, big survey, it's a campus climate survey last year. And it's something we pushed for. Um, and the results of the survey are in. And um, one big statistic I love to see was that it's around 90% for each category, but it's students, faculty, faculty, and staff support the work of the DEI, the DEI work that's going on in this institution. So it is overwhelmingly supported on this institution, and I think it's something to be celebrated. But through that uh, survey, there's also some issues that the university is going to work to improve on. Um, so I'm excited to see the work that his office does as well. Um, in terms of general updates, uh, the board meeting went pretty well. There was a disruption from a uh, protest group uh, in Denver. Um, they uh, disrupted the president's uh, remarks. So um, the the whole meeting was uh, temporarily adjourned. 
everyone moved to a different room. They were escorted out, and the meeting continued as normal. Um, it's a shame, though, because they missed their opportunity to do public comments. So, unfortunate. Uh, they could have had a – it was about 30 minutes of public comment if they uh, played their cards a little better. So, But that is all the updates I have currently. Um, there's a lot more board stuff coming in. I have a retreat in uh, next month. And um, there's, one, there's another thing. Oh, homeco homecoming week is next week. So um, get, uh, there's a lot of fun things we can do, a lot of different chances to get involved as well. So that's all I have for trustees. Any questions? I try sometimes. So, um, and then we'll be moving questions, concerns? Online? All right, moving on to uh, SACAV with Matt and Victor. Cool. Um, so SACAV went well this morning. We had our second meeting. We voted for a bond rep, and we voted for vice chair. Unfortunately, we didn't get either position. We both ran. I ran for a bond, and he ran for vice chair. We both didn't get it. Um, so that was unfortunate, but that's still okay. Um, we're still going to be able to collaborate with them. So we'll see how it goes. And let's see. As far as for APOD, I was an inter interim APOD rep this week on Wednesday. Um, they pitched, let's see, the student housing. It went from only like four floors and moving it up to 12 floors now. So a lot more housing for the students, which is really exciting. And like you said, it's going to finish by 2027. I know the design process is going to end early 2026, and they'll get started right after that. And then add four renovations for the rest of the school. They proposed a about a million dollar project to be able to renovate HVAC be able to renovate um, all the windows, all the old windows from a single to double plane, which reduces energy consumption a ton. Um, so we're expecting that to hit 50% uh, emission reduction by 2030, which is very exciting. Um, and let's see what else. Oh, and then ASCP is doing a composting ribbon cutting on Wednesday. And that is because here on campus, we made a closed loop of our recycling. Our compost goes to our stations. The students separate the, the trash from natural compost. And then we have a, we bought a composter to be able to use a compost in all of our um, gardens that we have on campus. Um, so that's really exciting. That's good. Um, so exciting enough that Kansas City Chiefs is going to come and see it, and the Denver Broncos is also going to come and see it, which is really, really exciting. Um, and, um, Wednesday, they uh, they said that they were interested, but they didn't say when they were going to come and see it. Yeah. It's so. the 25th, and oh, it starts at 4.30, and then it goes until 6.30, mm -hmm. and it's in the admin building. That's the ribbon cutting, though. I don't know about that. Yeah. That's the ribbon cutting. Thank you. I sent you all the calendar. Cool. Oh. And then let's see, as terms for how the else the ABOD meeting went, um, they had a safety session at the end of the meeting where the FACAP representative and the SACAP representative that were on the board had to leave, which is kind of interesting to me. Um, just the fact that students don't get to sit in the safety meetings, even though we are the students and we're the closest thing to be able to give them the updates that the students need in terms of safety. And for us to not have a seat at the table is really interesting. So at SACAP today, we were talking about uh, picking up a voting uh, kind of legislation project because it, it takes a lot for students to be able to get a vote on that board. So they said it's going to like a, take like a one, two year, three year process to be able to get a vote, but it's going to pick up. And I think this SACAP uh, selection of group is going to be, I think it's going to really advance that. So keep stay updated for that. That'd be really interesting. And then Matt is going to meet with Alyssa for the EBT vending 
and he's also going to meet with the health center to be able to talk about the menstrual products. So that's for that. Um, so today we were um, also approached by the director of strategy for Raria campus. Um, and they have another way for us to get involved with a project they're calling Tivoli Reimagined. I'll read this right now, but I also forward this description to everybody's email just a second ago. Um, the Auraria campus has included the Tivoli Reimagined project as part of our five-year plan submitted for capital construction funding each year. To advance this effort, we plan to submit to the Capital Development Committee for funding considerations for fiscal year 26-27. To do so, we will need to collectively develop a program plan document based on the previous reimagined work done by Hord Copeland and Mack in 2001. This program plan will be will need to be finished and approved by the rare board directors in March 2026. Um, the Tivoli reimagined projects will focus on critical infrastructure needs of the Tivoli Student Union building and the modernization of the building. As part of the steering committee, you would be asked to attend monthly meetings as a representative of your student body. Um, so I think I might have actually read this a hair backwards because the ask is for one representative from each institution's SGA and then one of the SACAB members to be part of this committee. Um, so just wanted to bring that up today, send it to everybody, um, look over it. Um, and we want to try and figure out who may want to be that representative uh, by next week. Public safety and SACAB only. Oh. In SACAB, we're also doing the public safety building. Um, the area campus has been awarded funding for the Campus Safety Center and has contracted with Anderson Mason Dale Architects to help us complete the design documents for the building construction. We would like to create a strong committee made up of representatives from various campus departments to guide design developments. The design process will likely begin later this year and continue through summer 2025. Student representatives from each institution will be selected from the criminal justice departments on each uh, from each uh, school. And then FACAB has representatives. We'll have a representative and work on that as well. Let you guys know just because if one of us do get elected, we'd like you guys' input on campus safety on campus as well. So. Is there any questions? Well, so you guys need someone by the end of Friday, closing of our meeting, correct? Um, yeah. Okay. I don't see why not. We could just vote on it for the next meeting, but anyway. Also allow our new counselor uh, opportunity. Questions? Concerns? Online? No? All right, moving on to the next one, the Accountability Committee by William. <clears throat> Thankfully, nothing. Um, that's always good news. Um, I do want to remind the council and our new incoming counselor to make sure to be at your office hours um if you can and then yeah thankfully nothing else any questions for will concerns online no all right move on to the next one the pr committee by siobhan and susanna Let's see uh what i meant to say is budget committee by mike so I hear we passed the budget, everybody. How exciting. Let me guess, you guys have zero questions whatsoever and it was perfect. Actually. Well, you know what, I, I, how can I help? How can I alleviate some? There's one problem I did notice after I submitted it. 
it's not 2022 to 2024. I was going to do it for the minimum if I caught it in time. But uh, no, this is the budget for 2024 to 25. So. Oh, perfect. Lovely. So, yes, questions, comments, concerns. Didn't want to add something real quick is that um, we're still voting next week because we want to, like I said, afford our new TSAC counselor the opportunity. Well. Well, I'll just ask it right now. Is that something you're interested in? Yes, but is there any other positions I could be co-chairing, or is that the only one available? In terms of budget, I mean, if you wanted, you could be the vice chair. And um, it, either way, I mean, if you want to be the chair, I can be your vice chair. I did that similar with Alex last year. I kind of coached him how to do a budget, how to do all that stuff. But if you want the chair or the vice chair, either or. If you if you if you say you want the chair now, I'll resign right now, and it'll be yours. Uh, I, I would personally have you like vice chair, but um, okay. is that is this be the only committee that I could be a part of? Oh no, you're open to any committee, no. so oh. you're open to any any, any, any committee. I would be mm -hmm. vice chair just because I'm not. That's fair. Familiar, That's fair. And I don't want to. Well then, you know, I will not resign as interim. <laughs> but do not do not call me chair. Call me interim, please. All right, any other questions? All right, then I yield my time to the floor. All right, then um, in that case, would it be prudent to move the voting to? Oh, well, I mean, did you move it to next week? We had it planned. We weren't planning on you coming back. I mean, coming back? We had it moved to next week because so we weren't expecting you to come into the meeting. So mm -hmm. that was the thing. And then uh, we also going to afford a new counselor time to, you know, uh, think it over and everything, but if you guys, yeah, I'd say, yeah. I'd say keep right. it next week, though I did forget to announce. Um, I officially appoint Patrick as my vice chair. Uh, the PR committee with Siobhan and Susanna. My bad. So, have you could see that we have the open house next Wednesday and the flyer has been posted in buildings on Instagram and everything. And also on the Instagram, we started posting the counselors. I was supposed to post three yesterday, but um, it got too late. So I didn't want to like be unprofessional and post it so late. And then also we also, well, we updated the link tree too. So on the link tree, it just it just has the counselor sign in to track on everyone attendance, the student government website, the student government 2024 and 2025 counselors. They also have the recordings of TSAC meeting, the event calendar of MSU, and just how students could be involved in student government. So any questions for them? Um, yeah, no. As far as like joining communities, I would public relations would be one that would be joining. Could I be involved with that? Is that a discussion for right now, or is that a discussion for another day? It um, probably for. Yeah, I don't really mind it too. Um, I was gonna say something, but I forgot. Oh. Since we're posting the counselors, I was wondering if you have a headshot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, before I forget, um, uh -huh. <laughs> before I forget, I do want a tiny paragraph of everyone of who they are that we could post on Instagram. Haley and Siobhan. Well, Siobhan was the only one that had it through the um, the messages on Teams. So Haley sent them. Um, Will, if you could resent it, it sounds more like a campaign instead of like who you all has a person. <laughs> So I just want students. Oh, uh, I just want students for. I just want students for us to know, like, hey, we're also human, and like, this is what I like. This is a fun fact about me, and like, they they could feel welcome in the office. So that's just my main goal right there. Our main goal right there. So yeah, if anything, just um, send me send me an email of everything you need from me, and I'll be able to get that as far as, as soon as I can. Thank you. And Vanessa, did you have something to say? Just 
judging from the color. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, uh, Vanessa, unfortunately you missed public comment. So well, next meeting, uh, you'll be able to comment. Is this the same? Yeah. Well, just give a quick vote. I motion that we give Vanessa the time to state her comments. Seconded. Aye. Uh, Vanessa, um, you're welcome to talk. Could you come off mute real quick, please? And you, uh, yeah, if it's possible, it's fine if you type, but you have five minutes. Uh, if you want, if you have time available during the week, you can come by the TSEC office and also talk to us. Yeah, continue with the meeting, please. So, yeah, uh, we'll just move on then. Um, so, Sustainability Committee, Victor. The meeting Tuesday afternoon, trying to rethink of a way to restructure the sustainability committee other than just green purchasing funds, or not the green purchasing, but green purchases. Um, so we got down to the nitty gritty of it, and it turns out that even in the Constitution, the only things that I'm allowed to do are by green purchasing funds, um, and that's about it. So um, there would be an amendment written up in the next few weeks to amend that part of the Constitution, as well as we're going to present what the Sustainability Committee will look like moving forward. And we also have a meeting on Tuesday, which I know that Riley from ASCP did say she was going to attend. So that is going to be our way of partnering with somebody on campus to um at least help us with how they have worked so well with their sustainability program here on campus. Um, and as well as I have gotten in contact with Casey as well. And um, as a sustainability chair, I feel like I should show up to the compost ribbon uh, ceremony. So I will attend that. Um, and again, if you guys want to attend the meeting, please, it's 1130, 1130 to Tuesday, if you're able to show up, um, express your concerns. Um, at the TTAC office. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's exciting to see what we're going to be able to do with this committee. I hope we're able to do a little bit more. That's about it. Any questions for Victor? Concerns? Online? No? All right, we'll be moving to the next uh, part, uh, open for announcements and updates. Uh, Matt, or Mike, sorry. 
So uh, I forgot to mention this is the budget update, but um, now that you guys have your budgets, you guys are free to use your budgets. If it's for an event and it's be sponsored by the council, that's the only caveat. But uh, you guys are free to, as the chairs of committees, use your budgets as you do see fit. Uh, your final boss is Armando, so if he doesn't like it, you just gotta get past him. So uh, that that is your uh, your check if it's a if it's an unjust purchase. But uh, you gotta use your budgets wisely, and uh, I excited to see what y'all do. And then it, I will only reconvene the budget meeting as on a per need basis, at least once a month, depending on what we need. So. So I have some updates, um, the first of which is about the civic engagement committee with Stephen and Dr. Preuss, who is the chair of the political science department. Um, he, along with um, Stephen, Haley, and I, we are on that committee. We're working on that committee. Um, and so... I was unfortunately not able to attend our last meeting, but Haley was, and she um, reported some updates for me to share. So that committee, along with a array of votes and some tri-institutional events, are happening to foster some dialogue around elections to support students post-election and what that looks like, um, depending on the results of the election. And Haley and I discussed that. Um, one role of us as, a, as um, you know, a part of the council, the Student Advocacy Council, is to support students post-election to make sure that they know that you can go to the counseling center for free. You do not need health insurance to go to the counseling center. They have groups. They're amazing. They're really nice. I promise. Um, and so things like that and sharing resources and making sure that students know about them is something that is not only important to me, but I think it should be important to us as a council um, that we are caring for our community, that we are caring for our students. And I think that that is a really um, informative and integral way to be doing that, um, especially in a very... Um, tumultuous political environment currently. Um, and so there are also events that Haley and I will be sending out that um, MSU Denver is putting on, tri-institutional folks are putting on, um, and I think it would be great to have some TSAC rep representation there in addition to Haley and I. Um, and so I will be sending those out as well. Um, and folks really want to foster a nice, climate conversation even before the election. And I think that's when, um, you know, we can still be involved as well. And something that I even want to add is how we are supporting our students post-election. You know, we talk a lot about being open access, that we accept students with varying levels of statuses, but then how can we um, as a collective, not just as TSAC, but as an administration actually support our students post-election. And so I think those are some things that we are talking about within that committee, and I will continue to keep everybody updated, and I will send out when those events are happening, um, and I will do so beforehand so you can put them on your calendars and have notice about them. Um, there, I was also reached out to by somebody who is a part of faculty senate, um, and I just wanted to make sure um, we don't have a chair for that, yes. Faculty Senate and Academic Policies Committee. I'm not with academic faculty. You are? Okay. Okay. Yeah, because, because Brendan Kendall, who's the chair of Academic Policies and Committee, asked me for TSAC involvement. Um, yeah, I can. I didn't know that we had chair for that. Um, that is my bad. Um, but I told him that I would reach out to the council about that opportunity because I cannot be there. Um, as every Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. <laughs> Um, but I can forward that along and it sounds like they want as much um, student involvement as possible. Is Immigrant Services Department on the uh, the committee, Immigrant Services Department, is it on the committee for voters' rights and being able to include them in that? Just a question. For Auraria votes or uh -huh. for the dialogue? For the dialogue. For the dialogue. I was not at the meeting, but 
I want them to be there, number one, especially because of everything that I had just mentioned about making sure that the supports that we do have for our students are actually being at those events and it's not just, you know. Um, and so I agree, and that is something, we don't have a standing meeting, but that is something that I can make sure is it, like talked about with both of the advisors for that committee and also inquire about what you would like that to look like um, because I think that's really important. Just as just as long as the Immigrant Services Department is included in those conversations. Obviously, I agree. they may not be able to vote, but they are just as, their voice is just as important yeah. as the people who are able to vote. So just as long as they're included in the conversation. Yeah, I agree. I will also say the um, role of TSAC counselors in that committee um, was shaped before we got there. So it was to my understanding when the committee was pitched to me, when it was pitched to us as a collective, that it would be more of a collaborative process, thinking through events, thinking through what it looks like, things like immigrant services, things like the LGBTQ center, things like Gita, things like Rowdy's Corner, that would have been top top of mind for me to have at events like that. Um, I think it is less of a collaborative effort in the planning of these events right now. And it's more of support, um, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it is not what I thought it was going to be. I think because the council started late, we didn't get our committee assignments. Um, you know, Stephen just came in. Um, but that is something that I really care about if I'm going to occupy that space. And that is something that I have capacity for <laughs> and that I am in. And so, yes, I hear you. And if anybody else has any other comments about that, please let me know. It's something that I care about. Um, and they're really trying to host ongoing dialogue, events, um, and I think having a wide range of perspective at those events um, is really, really important to make sure that students feel welcome in that space and it's not just accessible to them. Um, and so those are my updates. Anyone else? No, um, I have some updates to give you guys when it comes to the talk we had. <laughs> I have one more update, guys. Surprise! Um, I have been engaging in some student meetings this semester. Um, so, you know, that's really important to me. Um, and one of the meetings that I had was with Rowdy's Corner. Um, I know there is some history and engagement there. Um, but they were talking to me about wanting to make Rowdy's Corner try institutional. Uh, this is not a referendum that I'm about to propose. This is me trying to streamline information to you guys. Um, and the reason that they say that is because they're seeing an average of 1,553 people each week come into Rowdy's Corner. That's a lot of people, and not all of them are MSU Denver students. And they, Rowdy's Corner is like, we don't want to turn away CU, C, especially CCD students. They don't want to turn those students away. Um, but that is, you know, MSU Denver says, this is our Rowdy's Corner. Um, and then when you look at, like, the funding structures, they get their funding primarily, predominantly from the health center. And the health center is tri-institutional. Um, and... I don't believe that CCD and CU also get their funding from the health center. Um, I would have to circle back on that. Yeah, give me one second. Um, and so the thinking is that, like, they don't want to keep turning down students, um, but they are having so many students. And um, on average, last semester, it was 730 students per week. Um, and so... They are seeing the highest number that they've seen is 2,600 students, uh, but the average is 1,553. It's a lot of students, um, and those aren't just all MSU Denver students. And so, yes, I know we are MSU Denver TSAC, but I think, I think food access to every single student on this campus is what keeps you 
in school. And I think if we want to talk about retention repeatedly, if we want to talk about it in these rooms, in these spaces, then we have to put those thoughts towards some action. Um, and I will be continuing to work with them to see what that looks like, uh, because I believe that it's really important and I don't think we should be turning down students for food. And that is my last update. <laughs> uh, real quick, uh, I was gonna, since it's getting a little close to one o'clock, I was gonna motion that we vote to extend the meeting by 10 minutes to 110. I second that. All in favor? Aye. Should pass, all right. Um, is there any uh, Matt? I have a direct comment? Um, so the health center is actually owned by MSU Denver. Um, it serves for institutional, but it is owned by MSU Denver. Um, and I'm not trying to push back against what you're saying because I would love to see it transitional. Um, but I would still be concerned with the funding because um, with how much issues they had last year and they just got in under the health center. Um, so I'd be concerned about capacity as well. Can you send that? Oh, can you send me that document that shows that MSU Denver owns the health center because I haven't been able to find that online? I'll try and find something to that effect. I will also. Um, were you finished? But thank that you. Would be, I appreciate that, Matt. That is one that's great, great initiative. I very much am behind that. Uh, as for all of tri institution, that would definitely be a SACAB kind of thing. So if you would want to include us in those meetings to be able to report back to SACAB and to all the ex officios on SACAB that there is a need for CCD and for CU Denver students access to Rowdy's Corner, then there would be, I don't see any problem with them backing that as well. Yeah. But again, funding. Yeah. And the fact that they get their funding from Metro and Metro does own the health center, although they do serve institution students. Um, but yeah, I just yeah. and I would love to be a part of those meetings as the sustainability chair. Mm -hmm. I'll add something after Mike goes. Yes. <laughs> so just to come as I caught up here, um, the committee does know that CCD or C CU Denver does have a food pantry. You, we know this, right? Yeah. So does CCD. So they both have food pantries. Um, Traditionally, CU Denver's food pantry has not been accessible to all students because it's in their locked in their wellness building, which is across the street. So they don't make it accessible to our students. I would strongly recommend. I, and I like the course of action. We serve our students first, and unless we see like a monetary fixed income to support such initiative, then I don't see why. I mean, I don't. If they're not going to extend offer to us when our students need food, then why are we like? Give them back. I could see his argument for CCD because we've always kind of helped CCD in that regard, whether it's our food pantry, whether it's our kind of benefits, which I do agree, like us kind of uh, helping them in that sense. But I would caution um, if the, the, the if there's a not equal um, if if the handshake isn't there, then I don't. I would caution in going with that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Is there any more questions? Just have a quick comment. Um, I hear everything that y'all are saying, and I think that there is a lot of importance and then that there is a lot of value in that. Um, and I appreciate engagement as I work with them through this. Um, something that I think is important to note is um, I will touch base with the students and the staff um, and ask in what capacity they want to be, you know, what feels best for extended TSAC um, engagement. Uh, but I will just name that that is um, a work in progress given some historical dynamics that I was not privy to. Um, so it just depends what is comfortable for the dynamic. And so I will keep you all posted on that. Um, but I appreciate your thoughts, your engagements, your ideas, um, and please always email me, always teams me if you have something to add or something that you would like to tell me. Any final questions for Amelia? Concerns online? Yep. Oh, if there are no more uh, 
Is there any more uh, open floor announcements? Anybody? Um, so I have some announcements to announcements to tell you guys. Uh, so one, uh, our meeting with uh, Dean students, uh, Taylor Tackett, we uh, recently spoke with them and we were all talking about in our meetings before about uh, transparency for resources and understanding the cost, you know, what is free, what can we get, go do? Um, they, Taylor Tackett uh, provided these folders, which is a plethora of information about um, the Dean students uh, programs as a student care center, student contact on the back as a flow chart for um, student behavior referrals. And if you open it up, it lists uh, all the resources you have when it comes to uh, where you need to go. If you have food insecurity, housing insecurity, and all that sort of stuff, um, there's a stack of these folders in the TSAC office. Uh, if you guys need them, if you want to hand out to students, uh, that's one item. And the next one is we have a housing update from Dr. Simpkins. Uh, mostly, it was just a review of the plan. You want to let us know that any more specifics he doesn't want to share publicly yet. Um, they're still finalizing plans to get uh, proper approval. Um, please see my other co-chair, Haley Glass, for more details. Um, uh, raise concerns about parking in regards to adding to housing. It seems like uh, they're working with AHEC currently on this, but the solution is not to add more parking. So there's that. Uh, for the housing project, it would not come out of the student tuition fees. Um, it's a loan or bond that they're uh, taking out and utilizing the money from renting out the building to pay back. So I know it's a concern for everybody, so just to clarify that. And uh, is there any questions? Yeah. Uh, you have to see Haley for it. And then uh, if there's no more open floor announcements, we'll move on to uh, faculty staff senate with Matt and Siobhan. As um, for the staff senate, um, it was last week that they had their meeting, so it's every two weeks. And um, in the staff meeting, they they um talked about how how they're going about um doing doing trainings for the for the staff as a whole, and they talk about the retention because they um they had a few a lot of firings last year, but then this this year um there were less people being fired. And and there was also a big concern about um, minority um, workers um, um, lose they they were losing retention with those so so um, they are um, trying to find they are um, looking into a way of finding um, how to gain tr regain trust and support and how to support the minority um, workers so yeah that was it for the staff. Mm -hmm. Do you have those numbers that you can share with us later? OK. OK, perfect. Thank you. Hey. Yeah, I joined the faculty meeting this week. Um, they started out talking more about like how their hours recruit kind of stuff. And they had someone from HR come in basically stating that were okay in competitiveness and wages, but they were hesitant to say um, in a good place, just okay. Um, but more related to probably students, um, it looks like uh, Dean Tackett presented a couple of things. They're going to be, uh, he's creating a couple of committees, not asking for us at this point, but um, to reevaluate academic integrity policies and code of conduct change process. Um, so he's creating a committee for that to review the code of conduct every two years. Because um, one thing he referenced is like currently the process doesn't afford students due process. Um, so they're working to fix some of those kinds of issues. Um, it also looks for like for the fiscal year 26-27 um or actually i think it's the academic year um they're putting a pause on all curriculum updates um, because they're going to have some outside like auditors for different like uh accreditations are going to come in and evaluate so they're not changing anything while that's going on um they're also going to be uh 
re-looking back at the cadre values. I forgot what that specifically stands for. I think I might be able to. Yeah, basically the values that we use as an institution. Um, and then the last thing, um, Saturday the 28th is the Rowdy's Cookout. Um, that is a Saturday. Um, it is from 11 to 2.30. Um, it's open all students, and it's focused mostly at students. The only reason it was brought up at their meeting is for volunteers. And that is all I have. Any questions for either of them? If not, we're just going to move on to the last item, uh, advisor updates. Armando? Yes, uh, not too much. I just wanted to reiterate capacity for you all as this is a smaller council. If we have to say no to some student representation, we can. And I want to empower you all to say no. Um, they're going to be asking a lot of student reps and always feel like they need to go to TSAC, but I do think we can, you know, challenge them to do otherwise. So if you guys are reaching capacity, please keep yourselves in mind. Please keep your grades in mind. Um, I know MSU doesn't do a good job about focusing on academics, but I try to. Um, and you did sign a contract to have your GPA above a certain threshold. I don't remember. A 2.5. So just try to keep that passing limit. Um and then the advisors and I with the co-chairs um, are discussing, you know, the implementation of having student committee members just so the work is not all on you all. Um, I do think the way that this council is moving, we can pilot that program probably sometimes towards the end of this semester or the spring semester and almost kind of create like a good pipeline to have folks run for student government later. So we want, I want to, actually, I'm going to ask all of you to, within the next two weeks, kind of explore how can I pass this off to students? What can students within the community kind of do within this committee so we can kind of create that framework and then we can go generalizing from there? Um, other than that, nothing else? Good meeting. Any questions? Well... A quick question. I, do you guys have a uh, structure planned out for that already, or is that coming in? We're, we're brainstorming and envisioning right now. That's yeah. why I'm asking you to do the same for your committees that you go over. Say. Sounds good. Thank you. Yep. Is there any other comments, questions? All right. Um, I motion that we end the meeting. Second. Right. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meeting ended. Reveal weapons. Did you want to say? Yes, please. Uh,